This one is from Thomas. I have a question in ophthalmology outpatient clinic. How will you code E&M in ophthalmology? Are there any special codes other than 99201 to 205 or 211 to 215 for new and established outpatients? Is E&M coding different for ophthalmology compared to basic E&M coding? Can someone explain to me with some reference about determination of MDM in E&M? I'm getting a lot of queries about MDM from the providers, physicians. Thank you. So yes, um, ophthalmology is the only specialty where they can choose to use the regular E&M codes or the, the, the special I codes that are in the medicine section. So I've got a answer sheet prepared here. I did a little um, screen capture from a super coder and you can see 92002 to 004 are new patient ophthalmological services and procedures. So these are, these are the I codes. It's the same as regular E&M and that they're divided by new versus established. There's only two codes for new and there's only two codes for established. The difference is uh, the level. So um, it's intermediate versus uh, comprehensive. Okay. So here it is in my CPT book. <coughs> um, so ophthalmological services, that's basically your eye codes, medical exam and evaluation with initiation of diagnostic and treatment program. So you do need to have that. That's before the semicolon. Intermediate, comprehensive. So these are the two new code, um, new patient codes. And then we've got 92012 and 014. These are the intermediate for established patients. Um, and comprehensive for established patients. Again, it's with initiation or continuation of diagnostic and treatment program. Um, ophthalmologists can choose to use regular E&M or these codes. Um, here are some definitions. If you choose to use the I codes, just like any other code in CPT, you need to meet the, the definitions. Your documentation needs to meet it in order to be able to use those codes. So, Intermediate says, um, describes an evaluation of a new or existing condition complicated with a new diagnostic or management problem, not necessarily relating to the primary diagnosis. And so they do things like a history, a general, ge general medical observation. They look at the external, external ocular and adnexal exam and other diagnostic procedures as indicated. And if you've ever had an eye exam, you know how they put those drops in and sometimes you can't see very well after. That's this my madriasis for the opth ophthalmoscopy. Whew, tongue twisted tonight. So then they give you some examples. This is right from your CPT book, these definitions. <coughs> then we go into comprehensive. And it says it describes a general evaluation of the complete visual system. And down here, it always includes initiation of diagnostic and treatment programs. So in the, the research I did, they really emphasized this. If you're going to use these comprehensive codes, which are more money, higher RVU, to really make sure you have that documented. And this was actually taken from, I think, my CPCH um, textbook how they and I liked how they did a comparison. I'm very visual, as many of you know, and to do side by side comparisons. So intermediate versus comprehensive eye codes. They um, both require a history. They both require a general medical observation. Now the intermediate does an external ocular and an adnexal exam. So they're looking at the surrounding structures to the eye ball itself. And then comprehensive, they're doing the external and the scope of the eye. Uh, intermediate, they do other diagnostic procedures and then um, gross visual fields. Intermediate, they do a basic sensory motor exam. Uh, intermediate may include those eye drops and the comprehensive often includes 
uh, biomicroscopy exam and they do this cycloplegia um, or these these drops and they do uh, tonometry so they measure the pressure of the eye so you can see it's definitely more involved and then again always includes initiation of diagnostic and treatment programs you need to have that to be a comprehensive now i found a lot of great uh, websites for you to go to to really get um you know, as much detail as you want if you're working for ophthalmologists or you want to give them the references because um, he did ask, you know, with references, which is good. You should always, you know, back it up. It shouldn't just be what well, Lorene said or Alicia said, you know, you want to know, um, you want to have it backed up. Um, this is an article. This is one of the advantages of subscribing to um, Supercoder. And this is a, a bonus we're thinking of starting to include. Um, in our uh, student packages for the, you know, the more full-blown courses, you get access to these type of articles, um, you know, bundled in. Now I'm seeing this because I'm logged in, but um, sometimes I'll give you little teasers and you can order articles, you know, one off by Supercoder, but um, they just go in and they explain it really, um, I think in a very basic way, the office visits versus the I codes, don't assume they're interchangeable and goes in and, and says, resist the temptation of high RVUs. What it's about is making sure you've got the documentation to back it up. Now, um, a free website here are the, using the I codes for op ophthalmic visits. And this is from a corneal, corneal consultants. Now it's, it's a bit dated, obviously 2009, but the codes are the same. There hasn't been much changes to the, you know, to the I code. So, um, the lesson I got out of this was this nice table. Now the RVUs are probably different right now, but it gives you an idea. If you look at um, the left side of the table are new patient codes and the right side are established. And then the first two rows are the I codes compared to the last five rows, which, which are the regular e &M codes. And what this bears out is that the, um, the RVUs are pretty similar for um a 92002 works out to be similar to a 99202, so level two in regular E&M. So the, um, the comprehensive ones are a little bit higher RVU, which is what's attractive to the physicians and why they want to code it. That is what you have to take into consideration. They are allowed to use whichever works best for them, but again, make sure you, they have the documentation to back it up. But a lot of good, um, oh, another one is this uh, American Ophth Ophthalmic, or no, American Academy of Ophthalmic Executives. And this is a really cool page. It's, they have a whole page dedicated to coding and reimbursement for um, opth ophthalmology. So check this out. They've got stuff about new coding changes, coding tools. So um, that will be on the, the answer sheet as well. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.